welcome back to the Bitcoin Business Bureau. I'm your host as always, Litecoin Leader. Today we're gonna to be talking about the uh, global banking system. We're gonna talk, it's gonna, we're gonna touch on Russia, we're gonna touch on sanctions, we're gonna touch on banks, we're gonna touch on that Asian country starts with a C that we may may not be allowed to say, uh, heck, it's China. So China, Russia, all the different systems, the interbanking system, we're gonna talk, talk about three different systems and what they really mean and what they really do. So let's jump right into it. So the first one we're gonna talk about is the SWIFT system. The SWIFT system, which stands for the Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunication. Now, if that doesn't sound like a bunch of gobbledygook to you, I don't know what to tell you, but this system, let me just tell you how old it is. It was born two years after we went off the gold standard, 1973. And somehow it's based in Belgium. I'm not sure the connection there, but if you know of it, leave it down in the comments. I'd really like to know, but I'm gonna be posting a few different links as well to this, to this video in the comments. So you get the SWIFT system. So what is the SWIFT system? Okay, the SWIFT system is, it's a collection of banks that are all in the same telecommunication system. Again, going back, Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunication. Basically, this is a glorified text message. That's really what it is. And, it, and the key part is that it does not transfer value. It is just to, to let you know like, hey, you got you got paid. Kind of like if you get, if, it, if, if you send 50 bucks to Steve, Steve will get a message from uh, PayPal or Venmo and say, hey, Steve, you got 50 bucks. That's what the SWIFT system does, except it's for banks. Now, there, there have been talk about other systems in the world that are comparable or possible replacements for the SWIFT system because that's how most of the world sanctions people. And just to give you an idea how big the SWIFT system is, the system, let's see, I can find, it has, uh, it, it has 11,000 global members. It handles over 42 million messages a day. And I'm stuck in traffic, so give me a moment here. So it's, uh, it's 11,000 global members mostly banks they handle over 42 million messages a day according to 2021 numbers that's up 11 percent from the year before and it really just is a message with a code it just gives you an id every bank every institution has a, a number associated with it kind of like an identification think of it as a social security number for the bank or a routing number and the number in the swift system it just says hey if you want to wire money from bank of america to your uh your cousin in germany you can wire that, sure, and what you do is you go in the bank, the bank will transfer the funds, and what it'll be is that it will send a message on the SWIFT system that says, hey, you were sending $5,000 to your buddy in Germany, and here's the message, here's the bank, for, here's, here's your branch of Bank of America, here's uh, the bank that's going to, here's the message, please handle the transaction, and then it'll just change the digits, and then put the money there, and then later on, everybody settles up eventually that's so or so they say but that's the system so the swift the important takeaway is the swift system does not transfer assets it only is a notification system so just because you're not in the swift system doesn't mean that you can't work with other banks and transfer assets in another method so what are the other system, the systems that have been mentioned as comparables as possible replacements well the first one was sips which, now going back to my notes, SIPS is the cross-border interbank payment system that was created in 2015. That's basically, uh, it was made from China, and it is traffic, lovely, thank you. Uh, and it was created in 2015, and this has been viewed as a possible replacement. Now, this is a yuan-based system, the, 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 the asset, uh, the currency for China, the Y-U-A-N, the yuan, uh, that's pretty much the dominant system. And there were 76 um, member banks, according to the article that I found, and I'll post that below. But there were 672 others that were interested in joining. So that just tells you like the amount of interest and growth in systems outside of the SWIFT system. Uh, the, the article that I've read, uh, I think it was, it was an Asian article, and again, I'll be posting that below. But it was really telling because this is not the first time that Russia has been sanctioned. And they brought up the point of what did Russia do back during the Cold War? And during the Cold War, what they did for the messaging, again, it's just messaging, they would send either an encrypted email or an encrypted telegram. That's what they would do. Uh, that's what they did during the Cold War. And it was, ex it was more expensive to do that, yes, but it worked. 
imagine just say, you know, imagine how they do it now. I mean, that was the Cold War. You're looking at like in the 80s, okay? Now we're talking about, you know, well, that's probably the 60s, 70s, and 80s. But now we're, because the SWIFT system invented in 73. So somewhere in the 70s and 80s, Russia got kicked out of the SWIFT for a while during the Cold War, probably at the height of Reagan's uh, presidency from 81 to 89. And that's probably when they got kicked out. But they, they were able to bank internationally and transact just fine. So there are ways around the system. And there are plenty of interest in other systems. I will mention this, that Ripple was mentioned in the article as possible alternatives. Now, when you get into cryptocurrency, the difference between cryptocurrency and a SWIFT or SIP system is that the cryptocurrency, the, the transaction is the message and the settlement. It's all in one. You transact the asset, you transact the settlement. The, the, when the asset moves and it settles in the blockchain, that's it. Okay, no take backs. If the money is there, the message is there, you can get alert if you have your system set up that way or if your wallet set up that way. But uh, again, SWIFT and SIPs are not part of any wallet system. They're not transfer of assets, they're just messaging systems. Now, the third thing I wanted to mention today is the SPFS and that was invented, it started development in 2014, but that really took off, the first transaction was in 2017. And that is Russian based. I am not going to attempt to tell you what SPFS stands for. It's in Russian. So, but it's basically a system for transfer of financial messages. That's all it is. Again, same kind of thing. We're just saying, hey, you've got mail, you've got money, that, that sort of thing. So, as the bigger picture here, okay, the bigger picture, and lots of people are thinking that cryptocurrency is gonna be the answer, and in part, it probably will be. And I've heard rumors that Ripple is involved, and it was even mentioned in the an article, and now Ripple is not the same as XRP, but don't be surprised if XRP is being used for transactions, but the market cap of that is just not big enough to support it. But it, it could get there. Obviously, blockchain could be a part of this. But the bigger thing to talk about is that, uh, is Russia still able to export? Are they still able to trade and transact? The, the prices of commodities are skyrocketing. We have anything from precious metals like gold and palladium. We have wheat, oil, um, let's see what else was on the list. Uh, oil, wheat and gold, aluminum, nickel, corn, gas, palladium, all spiking, all going up at a crazy amount. Uh, this is part of the global economy. We went in the 80s and 90s and the 2000s, probably the 90s and 2000s was the peak of it. Um, I would say right around 2000 or so, there was a lot of outsourcing and becoming a, a global marketplace and just-in-time delivery. And if you don't know what just-in-time delivery is, you should look it up, but it basically just means that you don't wanna hold any stock of inventory. You just want things to deliver, be delivered and arrive just in time for you to put it on your assembly line or you know use it and make your next product. So imagine, for example, uh, you were making, um, you're making a car and just in time like the the body would show up or the frame or the glass or the door handle or the chips whatever you needed would arrive just in time for you to make it that week you know you wouldn't be any lag time your inventory would be very low basically just your supplies for the next couple days and then there'd be another delivery there'd be another delivery which minimizes the amount of storage you need that is great if you have a steady supply chain but we have a global supply chain now that's really getting interrupted so that's part of the problem. I'm, since I've had a stoplight, I'm gonna check my notes real quick. Uh, we talked about SIPs and SWIFT. Uh, we talked about the wand based. Talked about how big SWIFT is. I think I've hit most of the major points. Uh, there was some talk about, and this is probably another topic, but it's the video's already getting a little bit long. MasterCard, Visa pulling out of Russia. They were already looking at alternatives. This is what a, a financial secretary or financial prime minister, whatever the title they have, somebody's in charge of the financial part of a country to make sure they have plan Bs, backup plans. Not the same plan B that we may know from this guy. Can I get over my, and right there, that guy. Uh, who kind of does the uh, the stock to flow model? That different plan B, but I've talked about I've basically covered it. So the SWIFT system and the SIP system and the SPFS. This SPFS is a system that actually transfer. Well, it's a it's still a messaging system, but I think let's see. Yeah. Yep, it's still a financial messaging system. So they're not transacting the assets. They're not moving the assets around. That's really the difference. So the question is how they aren't going to actually move the assets. Um, there's talk about blockades. There's talk about blocking things. There's, I mean, people can impose tariffs, they can impose blockades, but with so little moving around the globe right now and so much turmoil of, in ports and so much in trucking 
and so much costing fuel. But the, the big thing is that if Russia is able to export things like natural gas and oil to the Middle East or Iran or the, Euro the European Union, they're going to do just fine. There's nothing really stopping them. It doesn't matter if you don't get the notification that you got the money as long as you get the money in some way because the assets will still be moved. Now, sanctions aside, they'll find ways around it. They have, Russians are pretty good at this because, hey, they've done it before during the Cold War. So, that's lots, lots covered there. I hope that this is informative. I hope that it adds value to you. If you find these things invaluable, please like and subscribe, share this. And I'll also say this, on Monday, or excuse me, tomorrow is Wednesday. That's AMA day. I'll be doing a free AMA here on YouTube, probably about 7.30 or 8 o'clock Eastern because I have a call at nine. But. Uh, we'll, we'll do it then. We'll join. Well, hopefully people can join. You can ask whatever questions you have, learn more about what's going on. Oh, and if you want to join my Patreon for five bucks, you can find out what, a whole bunch more stuff of what's really going on, things I can't really say on platforms like this. But we'll do the best we can on YouTube tomorrow. I hope to see you there. Lots said today. I'm going to close the door on the bureau, try to say it, drive a little more safely, say follow leader one last time, and I'll see you soon. Take care.